I am going to pre-warn you about this because I, I, when I talked to David, he didn't know this was happening. Um, Kubuntu 24.04 is going to be shipping 5.27. So there's going mm-hmm. to be users who are reporting 5.27 bugs as Plasma 6 yep. bugs, and they won't know the, the difference. So I had some discussions with the Kubuntu people about this, and I told them this. I said, you are going to be shipping a version of your distro that has software that's already out of maintenance. Yeah. For, and like, then it's um, three-year OTS, I believe these uh, the flavors do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. And, you know, if you're using the KDE version, you, maybe you're more of an enthusiast and you might want to upgrade, but still, it's going to be years. Um, it's there's going to be frustration. The thing is, this is nothing new as well. We we deal with this every cycle with Debian because Debian has a roughly two, sometimes two plus year release cycle. Mm-hmm. So by the end of that cycle, we are regularly receiving bug reports that were fixed two years ago right. by Debian users. And it's gotten to the point where I have a little snippet of text in my canned answers Git repo that I use for bug triaging, where uh, where I just copy and paste in there and I say, hello, you are a Debian user, please submit bug reports to Debian first because they are responsible for providing support for out of support versions. And this isn't because I'm trying to be mean to Debian, Debian's own guidelines recommend this. They recommend to their own users that users submit bug reports to Debian first and not upstream. So, you know, my butt's covered there. I'm, I'm not upsetting anybody. Yeah, the, it goes back to the problem where it's, uh, it's, it's just difficult to find where this information is. And people, like people were here, I have to report bugs, right? But they won't know all of this context around it. Like, should I report to upstream? Should I report to downstream? Depending on what I'm on, well, if I'm a Neon user, yeah, I should definitely report upstream because they're the only people that are going to deal with that problem. But if you're on something like Arch, should I report to the distro? Should I go mm-hmm. upstream? If you're using Kubuntu, or actually, let's go Fedora Fedora 40 because they're going to be on Plasma 6. If you're on Fedora 40, should you report your bug to Fedora or should you report it to Plasma? It, it's really hard to work this, this problem yeah. out and... I, I've discussed it's like general definitely... um, guidelines, but it, it there's no clear cut answer. It's really hard for sure. And I think there are different audiences for this message too, that you have to tailor your communication to. Because the kinds of people who actually do go to bugs.kd.org and fill in a bug report are almost by definition fairly technical people. Right. So I think it's at least in theory feasible to disseminate the message among them that you should try to put a little bit of effort into figuring out where the bug might be. Like, is this an upstream issue? Is this actually a KDE issue? Is this a distro packaging issue? Uh, For regular users, there's no hope. And we need to do a better job for them. Um, I, over the course of about a year and a half, I was responsible for helping to refine a particular error message in Discover that, that illustrates this principle uh, because in general nerds, they like to use their package manager on the command line to update, but regular people use discover. Sometimes nerds do too. And when regular people use discover every once in a while, it spits out an error because the distro has messed up their packaging somehow. Uh, It depends on the distro. Some are better than others, but we had this classic problem where people would see this error message and they would take a screenshot of it, or they would copy and paste it, and they would put it into a bug report in bugs.kd.org. And the message even says something somewhat technical that indicates that it's not our fault. The message would be like, oops, overlapping files between these two packages. Contract your, contact your distributor for assistance. And yeah, then that's a weird tools, one. Yeah. Right? Things like that. And so we refined this, the presentation in Discover. And where we've ended up with is a place where the error message first says, oops, there was an issue performing the update. Please try again later. Because most update issues are resolved when mirrors sync or the repos sync with each other or the network connection gets better, right? So that weeds out a ton of things. Then there's a button on the bottom that says, click here to see nerdy technical details. And the nerdy technical details is in a box. And it says, here is the message 
from your distributor's package manager. And it doesn't say your distributor, it says the name of the distributor. So it'll say, here's the message from Ubuntu, right, right here in this little box. And then there's a button under it that says, report this bug to Ubuntu. And then you cl click on that button and it takes you straight to Ubuntu's bug oh, tracker. Oh, okay. So, yeah, because we know what that yeah, URL is. It's in the release data. Um, right, that is right, a standard yeah. cross distro thing. Um, so basically what we tried to do here was make it as easy as possible to report a bug in the right place and more difficult to report a bug in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. And as a result, most people don't file bugs on this in Discover anymore. I would say once a quarter, we get a bug report where somebody has literally taken a screenshot of the error message that says, please report this to Ubuntu. My favorite is when it they take that, a yeah. picture of their screen with a phone. Yeah. That's, I like those. That's that's great. But you know, the message will explicitly say what they should do instead. And right, in right. that case, we can close it. But we, we went down to, I would say, at least one bug report per week mm -hmm. with this kind of issue um, to no more than three or four per year. So it is possible. It is possible to direct people to the right place, mm -hmm. but it takes a lot of effort. It really does. And this was a clear cut case where the error message is unequivocally coming from the distro. Mm -hmm. And it, it took us a while to, to figure out a user interface that guided people in the right direction. So it's, it's that times a thousand that is, right. is needed to help people to, to get their reports into the right place. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things Katie does that does help out with the bug reporting as well is having the reporting a bug in a lot of KDE applications where you can just like go to like a help menu or something and there'll just be report bug there. That I think yeah. it doesn't solve every problem because obviously not everything has it. And sometimes something might be breaking outside of the app and it, it looks like it, cause you've got the app open. It looks like the app itself is breaking. So it's, it's not going to solve every problem, but what sort of effect, actually how long has KDE been doing that? And as that's been introduced, um, what sort of effect has that had? So KDE has been doing that for at least 10 or 15 years. Okay. That menu item has been present in the menu structure of every single Qt widgets based KDE application for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, we don't get those automatically in QML based apps, but for mm -hmm. most apps, we do add it in there manually because it seems useful. Uh, I don't know if I can quantify the exact effect sure, that it has. Sure, it's been that long, then it's hard to say, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. And and the thing is that this also contributes to the bad bug report effect too, because right. let's say- Makes it too easy. Uh, it, it makes it too easy, right? Let's say you're using uh, an NVIDIA GPU and you experience some kind of weird tearing or graphical glitching on your app. And you, you're like, ah, oh, the app is broken. I'm going to report this. Well, the app is broken, but it's not the app's fault, right? And it, it, maybe it's not even the compositor's fault. Maybe it's your GPU driver's fault. So this is this is a very challenging thing to to, uh, to figure out how to how to present.